What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And, um, <laughs> we here. Oh, boy. Finally, Black Panther. Wakanda Forever. It's here. Man, what a movie. So first of all, I'm going to do a review. But what I'll say is, if you are thinking, even remotely, you are going to watch this movie. Or, I don't know, you're on the fence. Should I, shouldn't I? Pause this video. Go watch the movie. Or decide you're definitely not going to watch the movie before continuing to watch this movie. Because this film has got a lot of events. Things happen in this movie that you will not expect. Characters that you can't even imagine will appear in this movie that you couldn't predict. So that surprise will be magnified tenfold if you watch it as I watched it without knowing anything and being shocked to your core by what you saw. So that's what I want to say. Stop watching when I say, and if you want to watch, I'm going to do a spoiler-free review first of all. When I say, give my rating, and I say, now stop watching, because I'm going to start the complete review. When I say that, you can pause, decide whether you're going to watch it or not, or go watch it, then come back. Let's get into it. So, spoiler-free review first of all. If you've watched my videos from before, you know this only takes like two, three minutes, so let's get into it. So, was this movie a good movie? Absolutely. It wasn't even the type of superhero movie that you're used to. Because this was not a superhero film that focuses just on the fights, the perspective of a hero, just to have a hero movie. This movie, you can feel, was made by a director and a cast that cares so much about the meaning of Black Panther and what this world means. Even the opening credits. And it was just Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther, man. Even that there kind of, it took me to a special place. Like, I was just silenced by that when I saw that. And I didn't know what to think or what to feel just seeing that. And it kind of made me think to myself, this is real. I'm not going to see Chadwick Boseman in this movie. Even when I look at it, I can't believe Chadwick Boseman is gone. I still can't believe it. Even watching this movie. And he doesn't. I don't know what's wrong with me. I was watching this movie. And I kept expecting to see him. Like it's. I don't even know what's wrong with me. It was it was weird watching this film. But as I was saying. Very good movie. Definitely a movie. Where you can see the story. The characters. The pacing. It was all meticulously put together you managed to have Wakanda and they expanded on that world the characters there was so many characters in this movie it's crazy there I would literally say there's over 15 main characters in this film and they all get enough time to shine. And even the characters that weren't in it for a long period of time, you understood who they are, what their evolution was, why they were there and they brought something. There was literally no waste in this movie. The only character I would say felt a little bit bit wasted was Mbaku, yeah, and Riri, Ironheart, those are maybe the characters I would say 
well, kind of wasted a little bit. Like, Riri was a good character, a very good character. She added something, but I didn't really feel she was necessary in the film. And M'Baku, I felt was almost like a filler character, right? He's a good character, an amazing character, but I don't feel like they... He didn't feel powerful. He felt like an important character that just has to be in the movie. That's what I'll say about that. I would rate this movie a 9 out of 10. Definitely an enjoyable movie. An incredible world was introduced of Talukan. Yeah. Nate Moore's world. And you see like the most, you see like he's got like these, yeah, you, we, we do know who they are because they've said it. There's Namora and Atuma. And just the whole world of Talukan, and you see it, and it's amazing. And they pay unbelievably beautiful respect to Chadwick Boseman. And um, that's definitely a movie that I would recommend you watch, 100%. So that's my rating. That does it for my spoiler-free review. Um, so, you want to go watch a movie? Come back, watch the rest of this video. But, if you are going to watch this movie, or you've already watched it, stick around. Sorry, you're not going to watch it, but you're kind of curious as to my thoughts, and you just want to hear anyway. Let's get into it. So, once again, if you haven't watched it, or you're thinking of watching it, pause now. Because I'm going to start the complete review with spoilers. Okay, you've been warned. Complete review with spoilers starting now. Warriors, we are back. In the world of Wakanda. Look, man, the movie came out yesterday. I didn't do a review. I couldn't do review. Like I was. Like the movie. It, it destroyed me. Right. I wasn't in a good frame of mind. Or proper state of mind. To do a review. Right. Man. I don't know what's wrong with me man. Why do I care so much about this? Man. I just want to enjoy this movie. But. I can't. Enjoy this movie. And a movie of godlike. But it's no Chadwick Boseman man. Oh my goodness. And the thing is. You got this character, Namor, and he is godlike. He is, I would say, Killmonger, Thanos level. But I would say, yeah, he's that level. Right, although I would say Thanos is clearly evil, uh, yeah, he's evil, but with Namor, it's a tricky one because it feels like it's just a matter of perspective. What is good to that person is bad to me, and what is good to me. Is bad for that person. Let's say for example you're walking down the street. And then you find a hundred pounds. Now someone's dropped that hundred pounds. 
you could pick it up and keep it. Or you could leave it or go and hand it in. Maybe that person will go claim it from when you hand it in. If you take it, it's a good thing for you. But it's a bad thing for somebody else. If you leave it and you've got bills to pay, it's a bad thing for you. But it's a good thing for the other person because they're going to get their own money back. So then it comes to the idea, what's good, what's bad. That's what I think Namor was. It's just, he's not a bad guy. He's just going to do and wants to do what is good for his people to protect his people because end of the day this whole situation is happening because wakanda is the one that came out we're gonna share their um, technology with the pm um, with the rest of the world that made people want to search for brother Brenium. but then situation happened with t'challa where he's now gone wakanda don't trust the world because of how the world is going on. They want to plunder. And they want to take for Brenium, And they're trying to force Wakanda to do it. Now it's got them to search for Vibranium. Under the water. And then we find out that there's another. There was another meteorite that did crash into the earth. That is rich with Vibranium. And that is in Talukan. Namor's area. And that's when he first comes out. And the first scene that he comes out, which he's talking to um, Ramonda, um, Queen Ramonda and Shuri, that scene when he's first talking is amazing. His delivery, his presence is massive. You can feel the gravity of Namor. That dude um, that plays Namor, Noche Huelta, he is a gola actor. I've never seen this guy's films before. I've never even heard this guy. But just seeing him as Namor, wow. Wow, bro. And uh, it would have been so amazing to see Chadwick Boseman Black Panther against this guy. The conflict of ideals and morality. Because Black Panther was a warrior, a fighter, but he wasn't a killer. Namor is a fighter and a warrior and a king, just like Black Panther. But the thing is about Namor is he is a killer. So it would have been so cool to see... Ah, oh, let me not. Amazing character. Fascinating character. And then you have... Shuri. Now... When the film starts... And I'm looking at this character... I feel... So sorry for her. Because I'm thinking of... The first film. Like when I was watching this film. She's a completely different character from the first film. Might I add. But she's the same character. Because she acts the same. But she just. her You can see an evolution. Which is amazing. Right. And when I was just watching. I just kept thinking of the first film. And the scenes that she had. With T'Challa. Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman in the first movie. And I just kept on... Oh, man. It kept on taking me out of the movie, to be honest with you. I see this amazing movie I'm watching. But throughout the whole movie, I kept thinking... Chadwick Boseman. Um... Yeah, so I kept thinking Chadwick Boseman. Right, he really was an amazing man, wasn't he? Then to play a character and I think about him like that. Like such a wonderful character. Man. 
right? Um, but she evolved, right? But her evolution was different, bro. It was different. Especially after a certain event happened when Namor attacked Wakanda because he told um, Wakanda the um, the dry land, the surface people, they're coming for us. You people got us into this because you you put them onto the scent of a vibranium. And there is a scientist that actually created a machine that could detect vibranium. Get that scientist, bring her to us because we need to get rid of her. Because she's the only one that can create the, the vibranium detector. If the surface world, like the earth people, the people on, um, you know, on land, don't have that type of device, they can't search for vibranium. And the scientist in person that they're referring to is Riri Williams, Ironheart, right? And that's what leads Shuri to go with Okuye to go find her. And then they have an, ex an excursion to go find Riri. And when they find her, the government is looking for um, Riri as well. Because they know that Wakanda is after her. Because it was her invention that can detect for brilliant. She doesn't know that her device that she created, Riri Williams created the device. She doesn't know that it's such an important device because it was confiscated from her because they said it's not really that good. It's a waste of resources and it's too big. We can't have it in the facility. So they got rid of it. They didn't. It was an incredible device. They stole it from her and they're using it for to detect a metal that could change the scope of the entire world, right? But she is not aware of all this. She's just a scientist. She's just an inventor that is trying to use her technology to be creative. Bloody good character. But I do feel like she was a little bit out of place. But she's still a good character. And I feel like the movie just doesn't fit her, right? That's just my opinion. And they went to go find her. And they got her. And they went to with her just to get all the designs and all her information about the machine that she detected. And that's when she got chased by the, the feds and everybody. And then there was like some incredible chase scene where Ironheart got on her prototype Ironheart suit. The Nia got in some, um, some godlike cool i think it was a chevy or it must have been it might have been a mustang and it was riri's dad's car beautiful car and shuri got on a bike yeah like a, a motorbike like a bmx bike or rally bike and they all went different directions and they were being chased by the authorities and it was just a cool amazing chase at night time and then they got rid of the police they managed to lose them a little bit and then that's when the Talukans came. Atuma and Namora came. And when they came, they came with a bang, bro. They did like some water bomb. I say water bomb, it doesn't sound very good, but it's bloody amazing. Yeah, it's like a water bomb that comes out of nowhere. And it blows up the area. And it could have killed... I think... I, I thought maybe Shuri was... What the hell? Because the explosion was right next to her. And it sent her flying. But she has like... Her Kamuya beams um, released like a shield. That actually weathered her fall. Right? And then... Okuye had a godlike fight with Atuma. I think he's like the general of the Talukan army. Yeah? And the Talukan army is massive... Yeah, even when they did fight with the uh, Wakandans in the river and like a submarine, yeah, they were winning. They were actually beating the Wakandans, right? So that just tells you what you've got to know about those people. But they were all mutants. They were all mutants. I mean, no, I think they all had like super powered bodies. 
But Namor was the one definitive mutant, right? Right, and even when you saw the whole situation between the Wakandans and the Talokan people, it felt like the Talokans were more powerful, right? Because they come from the sea, they're mutants, they've got vibranium, you know, so it just felt like it did feel dangerous for even the Dormelage, right? Without Black Panther. It did feel like there's no hope for Wakanda. That's how I felt watching the film. I felt there was literally no help. Like, it was over. It was a losing battle. And then Shuri got kidnapped by the um, Atuma and Nemora. Okuya had to go back. And she, Okuya was the one that was saying to Queen Ramonda, let me take Shuri with me. She'll have a good time. She gets to get out of the of the of the um the palace just to decompress. So when Shuri got kidnapped, it was on Okuye. And Queen Ramonda actually relieved Okuye of her duties. She sat there, like you're no longer the general of the Dormalaja, you're done. Out. And she banished her. She banished her, bro. Crazy. Like, the movie was an amazing movie, man. Like, the, how, the fact that it felt like a real, proper, human story in a superhero setting. Because even though you've got all these kind of crazy events going on, you can feel the characters were like me watching the movie. Watching the movie, trying to go forward, but when you're doing something, Chadwick Boseman, just pops into your, into your mind. Black Panther T'Challa just pops into your mind. And then he's not there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? He's not here. You got something to do. That's what the movie felt like to me. And I could see that in the characters, man. And a certain event happened when the more. What's that? I want to say the more, the way he says it, yeah. And then, when he attacks Wakanda, he basically kills Queen Ramonda. Queen Ramonda dies in this movie. Because his whole plan was when he got, he kidnapped Shuri and took her, Shuri um, basically took her to Talukan. Him and um, Shuri, Neymar and Shuri, they had a proper good conversation where they understood each other. They knew their perspectives. And Neymar was trying to get her to understand why he needs to kill Ironheart, Riri Williams. Because he needs to keep his people safe. She's the only one that can create the Vibrillium detecting machine. She needs to die. And Shuri's telling him, I can't let you do that. I can't let you kill an innocent person. I can't let you do that. That, that. It's not happening. Take me instead. And he says, like, well, what's that going to do? Right? Um, and that's when um, they, Queen Ramonda goes to actually find Nakia. Because Nakia has left Wakanda after um, T'Challa's death. Right? No one heard from her for six years. I don't know. Kind of... Makes sense with her character, I guess. You know, a war dog, a spy. Kind of get it, right? What we don't know is the whole reason that she's done that, which it didn't reveal until, like, the very end of the movie, when Shuri is reconciling with the death of her brother. She finally confronts it, because the whole movie, she doesn't confront her brother's death. And it's a bit me like me now. I'm not really, I don't really want to confront it and I, it's weird for me to think that he's not here. It's crazy. She goes to a dark place, bro. When Namor kills Ramonda. That is when the sorrow of losing her brother and then the anger of seeing 
her mum die in front of her really takes her to a different place and then she says like there's a bit where um because the whole reason that namor basically killed ramonda was because he kind of felt like he had an understanding with shuri he wanted kree ramonda gone because kree ramonda would not get on the same side as him because essentially what he wanted was for wakanda and talon khan to rise up against the surface world because of the way the surface world has done his people have done Mexican people throughout history and the reason that they had to retreat to underneath the water the reason why um, Wakanda has remained hidden basically from the way that the surface world has treated black people throughout the whole of history so essentially he's saying us to unite the Talokans and the Wakandans, we will burn everything. And when he said that, man, like, I felt that. When you look at the way the world is, the billionaires, the politicians, the way the system is rigged, so that we don't succeed. Even the working class people. Poor people. People that are trying to make ends meet. There's always some type of squeeze. Paychecks don't go up. Everything else. Inflation rises. When it comes to like VAT. The cost of food. Cost of petrol. Lights on. Things in general. Food, everything is going up. Whenever we want to get something extra, the system always tries to make sure that we don't get it to try to keep us down. You look at the way this, the social discourse, you look at how much disorder and um, hatred and distrust there is in the world. And to be honest, it's all manifested by the top 1% that has more wealth. Than the 99% of us. And then you realise. There's no way to ever change this. You look at the war in the world. You look how people are oppressed. And taken advantage of. And then you just think to yourself. When I see that. And you hear Namor says. He just wants to burn, join me. And we'll burn it all. We'll burn the whole world. I felt that when he said that. And then Shuri said, no. And, you know, I respect her for that. I respect her because imagine having all that power, right? And then seeing even to this day, the world is trying to steal from you. Because Wakanda has has revealed themselves. And guess what the world is trying to do? The world is trying to steal Vibranium from them. And they sent an incursion of um, French soldiers to go steal Vibranium from a Wakandan outpost. We've revealed ourselves. Allies. And then you're trying to send your soldiers in to steal from us. So you're showing us again that you haven't changed. You're still the same as before. As you've always been. Namor's character godlike, man. His character godlike. Right. So that's the but that's the reason he killed Ramondos, because he wanted to replace Ramonda with Shuri. And he said, I'll be back in a week. You will join us to take, to burn the whole surface world to the ground. Or I will level the entire of Wakanda. You have a week. Right. And that is when Shuri kind of wakes up. Because she is not a character I would say 
that's a worthy Black Panther in the beginning of the movie. Nowhere near worthy to hold the mantle of Black Panther. But her story, her arc, is godlike. Like, like her arc to becoming the Black Panther. The storytelling is amazing, dude. Amazing. If you literally just want a superhero movie with action and doing somersaults and fights and fighting people like one person versus 50 people, taking everybody out and then getting to a, a final boss who's really powerful and having an amazing fight and then beating that person just straight to that. Car chases and fights and jumping off buildings and flying and incredible visuals. This ain't the movie for you. This ain't it. This film is made by people that really care about the characters, about the world, about the world building, about the storytelling and about the character arcs. The actors are in service of the characters and the characters are in service of the world and the storytelling and then the storytelling is in service of the law and it really shows even when they show talukan yeah like they go in depth and it's so nice bro that when they're showing talukan and then they're going into the history. And it's not um, like America, you know, or Mexico modern time. It is from back in the day. The heritage that the system has tried to erase. And we get to see that. In such a beautiful way. And you can tell that the people that are the Atuma, Nemora and um, Nemor, Atuma and Nemora. They care as well about representing their people and their culture in such a significant massive movie. Superhero blockbuster movie that is driven by characters and lore. And it's historical because also in doing a movie like this, you're also paying respect to a hero in Chadwick Boseman. A hero for so many people, an inspiration, a hope, a symbol of good, right? So to do all of that in a superhero movie and still have incredible visuals... Wow, this movie was something else, bro. Like, really amazing movie. Um, even I'll say the scene. There was a, the scene where Shuri becomes the Black Panther. That scene, as she jumps down, she comes down. Bro, that entrance is the best superhero entry in any Marvel movie ever. That introduction to Shuri as Black Panther. Amazing. Beautiful. And also because the heart-shaped herb was lost in Black Panther 1. Because Killmonger destroyed it. He burnt it all. They couldn't have a Black Panther. So Shuri was relying on technology. Even when they were being attacked by Talul Khan, they were just using their technology. And it wasn't working because Namor is a mutant and he's got Vibranium. He's a warrior, a natural born warrior that's been around for, I don't know, I think they're trying to say he was around, he's been around for hundreds of years. I'm not 100% sure. About that, right? But I'm trying to say he, like, he's at least a hundred years he's been around, right? So he's a warrior, he can fly, he's got rebellion, he's a mutant, so he's got superhuman strength and vulnerability. You know, the guy's incredible, right? So it just feels like 
There's no way Wakanda can beat this guy. And they've got the power of water. And the water is everywhere. That's the reason that they can infiltrate Wakanda. Is because they're coming from the sea. The sea is connected to the, to the land. They can easily flood Wakanda. And we don't have Black Panther. So. When it came to Shuri using their technology. It weren't working. But she was able to recreate the heart-shaped herb. Because when she went to Talukan, Namor explained the history of the Talukan people and him. And showed her, he gave her a bracelet that was made out of the a special fruit that his people took. And which, you know, changed their bodies. And they were able to escape the world. And the way the, um, all those people were trying to take over their land by retreating into the sea. Shuri kind of thought to herself, maybe this has got a relation to the heart-shaped herb. Very, very similar. There is a meteorite filled with rubenium that came in contact with a special, uh, with a plant. Became a heart-shaped herb in Wakanda, in their area. Came down, infected some plant life underneath the ocean, created that type of um, a special fruit or something. But they ate that, you know, changed them into the way they were, and that's how she was able to use. It. She used some DNA from Black Panther and um, Chadwick Boseman, T'Challa, to recreate the herb, and that's how she got her power. And when she went to the astral plane, the ancestral astral plane, you know, Chadwick Boseman did it. T'Challa did it in the first movie and he saw his father. Shuri had just lost Queen Ramonda, killed by Namor. So when she went to do that, she went to the astral plane and I was expecting her to see Queen Ramonda or something. You know who she saw? She saw Killmonger. She saw Killmonger in her astral plane, ancestral astral plane. She appeared in the throne room. And she saw the throne as she was standing by, she came up behind it. And she said, she even said, um, called to her mum. And it was Killmonger. And he was like, sup cousin. And he was like, Killmonger. She's seeing Killmonger. And it makes sense. She's angry. She wants vengeance. For her mum is dead. Her country's being taken over. She has nothing. She wants to burn it all to the ground. She wants to kill Namor. She doesn't want to give him life. She doesn't want peace. She doesn't want... You know, a truce. Her mum is dead. And today... She woke up and she chose violence. That's it. And I respect that. But I was shocked to see Killmonger. Shuri chose Killmonger. Massive. And he was say, even killed. Now, the way Killmonger was talking to her, bro. He was even saying to her. You chose me. Because we are much alike. We don't care for these rules or these traditions. We see the power. We know what we need. We take it. So are you about standing about here all day? Or are you going to get to it. And get the vengeance that you need. That you must attain. Vengeance. Get on with it. And. Wow. Wow. Right. Uh, so yeah. You know, and that's what led her. And then she did get her powers. Powers of the Black Panther. She got her suit. Came down. An incredible, amazing scene when she got her powers. And she came down. And they had a war with the Talukan people. And then she confronted Namor on her own. With the help of Riri in her Ironheart suit. It was a good plan. And then they took, um, they put him in some type of inside of a ship. 
where they basically evaporated his power because they realized he's too powerful. So they had to weaken him. And what his strength is, is water. If he can absorb water and have water on him, that gives him his strength and it powers him up, right? Um, so they put him in the ship and they superheated it, like kind of like to dehydrate him. And that's what made him weak. And that's what gave Shuri the chance to beat him. And even the fight they had, the music that was playing, the Wakanda Forever theme that was playing is godlike. That theme is, I would say, the second best tune in the whole Wak uh, Black Panther franchise. The best tune, I would say, is the Wak um the Wakanda forever from the first movie, Wakanda theme, when they came into Wakanda. For the first movie, best tune, this is the second best tune, Wakanda forever from the Black Panther soundtrack when she was fighting um, Namor. Amazing. And that fight was godlike. And she beat him. And she properly beat him. It wasn't no bullshit where he was um she was just more powerful than him and then she was they were making him power no he was overpowered he impaled her he messed her stuff up man like he really he he he, he stabbed her it was a proper fight the only reason she, the way she got out of it was because she broke the spear that she he stabbed her with and then she pulled herself out of it Right, but you gotta realize she's a superhuman now, and she got that Vibrillium suit, so she could easily, she, not easily, because you could see she was still critically damaged when she was fighting um, Namor, and she was able to activate the thrusters on the ship. Right, she went Wakanda forever, and then that's what kind of like burnt him. Right, like proper. If that was any other person, they would have been incinerated. Instantly, but because he's no more powerful mutant, he wasn't right. That's how she beat him. But yeah, you know, as I said, the movie, an incredible movie. I definitely recommend you go watch it. They pay beautiful respect to um Chadwick Boseman, even though he wasn't in the movie. I was waiting for him to appear randomly, I just kept thinking about him. Um, they respect, even though they're getting on with like funny scenes and even the funeral kind of gave me closure for Chadwick Boson. I love the funeral scene that they did for Black Panther because that gave me the closure for Black Panther and everything, you know. Oh. And even at the very ending, when you see Shuri... Pretty much gives up the mantle of um, being the queen of Wakanda, right? And she gives it to Mbaku, right? So I think Mbaku's going to be like the new king of Wakanda, right? Because she's not about it, right? Her motivation is basically it was to beat Namor and protect her land, right? So the fact that she's not the queen of Wakanda, it makes sense. The role would not, don't feel like the role would fit her. To be 100% honest with you. Right. So I did understand that. And when they went to see Nakia. Right. And Nakia had a good role. Because she's the one that saved Shuri. From Talukan. Right. And you know. She went to um, Latin America. Uh, and you know. She's even speaking like Spanish. And you know. And she looked, she looked good in the movie. Nakia by the way. Right. Really beautiful. And um, she came out. In the ending. Because she lives in Haiti. And. She brought out a kid. And as when I saw the kid. I was like no way. No way. No way. No way. And then she said. This is T'Challa's son. His name is T'Challa Jr. And then the kid said. He said. To Shuri. Mum says. You're good at keeping secrets. And she's like, yeah, I am. And she's like, my name is T'Challa. Son of kin T'Challa. Man. Man. That got me. You know, I accept it. He got a son with Nakia. Nakia's worthy. 
movie's beautiful, man. Really good movie. Amazing movie. They say the movie was uh, 2 hours and 40 minutes. It did not feel like that. That felt like movie, that movie was maybe like an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, it, or an hour and a half. In no way felt like one, two hours, and almost three hours. No way, right? But it is apparently, like I look at the stuff on, um, when I'm looking at the stuff for the movie, and it says two hours, 40 minutes, I guess. But I didn't feel it. Maybe I was fresh when I went to watch it. But hey, who knows? So yeah, that's all I really want to say about that. Amazing movie. 100% recommend you watch that movie. That's my spoiler free review. Let me know what you think in the comment section if you've watched it. Or if you're going to watch it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay blessed. I give this movie, as I said before, 9 out of 10. And, uh... Catch you in the next one. Laters.